The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, my spicy hot dog bun. Yes. Let's talk about books. You see... People always say, hey, Steve, how do you do it? To which I say, thanks, meth. Mm -hmm. People also say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that I have been a loyal, lackadaisical employee at my local bookstore for 17 years now. Yes. It is not almost 17 years. It is 17 years now. It's October, so boom, now it's 17 years. <laughs> Happy birthday to my never getting another job. Happy birthday to my never getting another job. Happy birthday to realizing that I've been at my job for a really long time and just kind of sticking with it because I don't know what else I would do. <laughs> Happy birthday to my lack of ever getting another job. And as such, I really do have my fingers on the pulse of the book world. And I am here to rub my fingers all over your face, but not actually touch you. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. Mm -hmm. With this week's outstandingly unoutstanding episode of Notes from the Bookstore. Except no substitutes. Use only as directed. Consult a doctor or physician before listening to the podcast. Okay, you uh, can accept a few substitutes. We'll allow a few. Another but another I anniversary that we, we skipped over a little bit. But my birthday is always the anniversary of this podcast, too. Yes. So yes, yes, we yes. are into our third year now. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Third year. <laughs> third year of the Pope on film. Year three. Mm -hmm. That's good because, you know, uh, usually series get really good from season three on. Exactly. Exactly. So the show's only going to get better now. Mm -hmm. So like I did last week, I do have a, a story to tell, which I think might be somewhat entertaining. Maybe not. I don't know. But before we get to it, like last week, I wanted to talk shop a bit before we got to the story. Okay. What I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about an old school person who over the last year or so has slowly but surely risen in popularity to the point where, oh man, we have books and coloring books and toys and merchandise, so much. A Rick and Morty level amount of product for this really? individual. And it is surprising as hell, so I wanted to talk about it. Note the delicate pronoun game that I'm playing here to maximize suspense yeah. leading up. To the big name reveal. Here's a hint. No, it's not Stephen King. We already did that. Yes. But, speaking of Stephen King, did you see the preview for the new TV show? No, because I, I started reading the book and I wasn't interested. So, I don't Oh, no, 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 the confusion here because literally there's about a hundred different Stephen King things coming out and books and movies and yada, yada, yada. But uh, Hulu has a new TV show that they are working on and they, they just released a preview for it. And it's simply called Castle Rock. Okay. And it's interesting. It's interesting because, you know, here's here's this movie based on the book Gerald's Game. Here's this movie. It's based on the book It. Here's this TV mm -hmm. show. It's based on this book. But as but Castle Rock is based on the works of Stephen King. Okay. It's 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 not based on any one book. It's basically the Marvel Cinematic Universe for Stephen King. Huh. 
And it's quite interesting, especially when you look at the preview, because you're looking at the preview and it's like, okay, I'm not sure what's going on here. Looks like some sort of mysterious death. Looks like um, some fires are breaking out. That could be like a fire starter reference as yeah. far as I know. Maybe that's a fire starter thing. I don't know. And then, uh, oh, who is that old woman? It's Sissy Spacek. <laughs> There's a part of me that thinks that, okay, she might just be the old crazy woman who's hiding a secret. Yeah. But for all I know, maybe Carrie survived all the crazy shit. And now she's like, ah, I'm I'm acting just like my mom. You know, like maybe <laughs> she's, now Carrie is the crazy uh, Christian lady who's going nuts, you know? Yeah. And then they're, if they they show like a dead body and the dead body has all these Nazi tattoos. And I'm thinking, OK, it, that could be the apt pupil kid for all I know. Yeah. You know, and then the the preview ends with the most obvious one. Like maybe I'm reading into all of this. But then at the end, you see a car slowly going into a lake or a river or something. And right before it disappears into the water, you see a bumper sticker for Shawshank Penitentiary. <laughs> so this is basically just the Stephen King universe all in one show. Sounds it. But he he has always been a universe builder. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I saw some crazy ass chart once that literally there were lines connecting all of the different Stephen King books. Yeah. Oh, that would be nice yeah. to see. And it was this person was referenced in this book. And then that book was referenced here, and then it was all the references all in one big massive chart, and it looked fucking insane. Yeah. Yeah. So Castle Rock looks interesting. The preview's out there. But no, we're not talking and about Stephen me, King. And for me, it was it was the movie The Shining that got me into Stephen King to begin with. Yeah. Because that movie was so fucking huge at the time. It's the movie that everybody's been talking about much like it is now. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, and that's immediately what I picked up on in, in his books, that he references his other books, and I always thought that was cool. Yeah. References his other books and the Ramones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, big reveal time. The person I'm talking about, let's mention the name... Move that bus! Is that still a thing? They don't do that anymore? Move that bus? Yeah, the, the extreme home makeover shows where they get some poor person and then they send them on a vacation while they completely redo their house and they come back and now they've got this like three-story mansion and they're all crying as they're going through their house. I think that was so. Like a big ass, that was like a big-ass deal, like, what, eight, ten years ago. They don't do that anymore? Move that. I, I don't, I don't know. Huh. I know there are home flippers. Yeah. And pawn shop wars. And you know, other strange. I, television scares me. Yeah. I, 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 I need my television filtered. <laughs> yeah. Huh. So I wonder what happened to all those shows. Why they stopped doing them? Anyway, I'm talking about. Bob freaking Ross. Bob Ross. Really? Happy little tree, Bob Ross. Proof that select whites can have afros, Bob Ross. The king of <laughs> 80s PBS, Mr. Bob Ross. He is everywhere right now. Yes. And it's really? so weird. We've got the oh. we've got the We've got the art of Bob Ross, and that's like a coffee table book. Yeah. We've got a biography about him, like like a, like a, the wit and wisdom of Bob Ross, and it's it has it's like a biography of his, and then some of his best quotes. We've got an adult coloring book. Remember when that was a thing, like a year ago, when we first started uh, notes from the bookstore. <laughs> um, and then there's the Funko Pop figures. And now there's two different Bob Ross Funko Pop figures. So. People are looking for both, and then you get into the whole Funko Pop thing, and that's just a, a pain in the butt, and and all of the – there's a huge fandom, and they're all insane. Yeah. Then there's the Bob Ross bobblehead that talks. You press a button, and, and, it, it, and it's quotes from Bob Ross. It's Bob Ross talking. Then there's the, the 2018 Bob Ross calendar. Again, these are all things that our store has. 
Then there's a 500-piece Bob Ross puzzle that we're out of. Suddenly, Bob Ross is all up in my butt. If we have to we- reach, if we have to reach back and pull anything out of the past to be popular again, I'm glad it's Bob Ross. I mean, it could have been fucking Miami Vice. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. See. Freaking Miami Vice. Bob God Ross damn, is so relaxing. Young. Yeah. Yeah, if Bob Ross is, is back and he's popular and it's odd. I was just at Walmart. They had uh, all these Bob Ross shirts and it's weird. Bob Ross is as big now as Jay-Z was when he decided to write a, a hardcore gangster rap song that sampled Little Orphan Annie and everyone was okay with this. <laughs> Sorry, still, it still upsets me. It still really, really upsets me. The guy's huge. Bob Ross shirts. There's an employee at the store, too, at my store that loves Bob Ross. So anytime we get anything Bob Ross, I got to put it aside and be Katie. I got a new Bob Ross thing. Oh, my God. I'll be there in like a minute. And she runs in. Oh, my God. This will be great for my office because she's trying to get her teacher certificate so she can leave the store. Everyone's trying to leave. So, yeah. Shout out to Katie. Katie. So the guy's having a renaissance right now, a renaissance of Stephen King proportions. And for a while, I was really probably, weirded out. By it. Yeah, probably from them putting it on Netflix. I mean, again, he's so fucking relaxing, yes, that's man. Right. Yeah, so there's the Netflix episodes of the show. And then there's that like documentary that I haven't seen, but that's on my list. There's a documentary on Bob Ross? Yeah. Yeah, there's like a Bob Ross documentary. I, th- I thought I saw it on Netflix. I might be mistaken. A lot has happened. But... Yeah. But yeah, there was a Bob Ross. Yeah, so so Bob Ross is like this big thing. And for a while, I was weirded out. And I was wondering why. Why is Bob Ross a thing now? Why is Bob Ross back? What's the, the big deal? Then it hit me the reason why Bob Ross is huge now. Okay. Life is fucking horrible. Yes. Uh-huh. Life sucks now. Our president is an idiot, and he's going to send us into World War III, and there's going to be nuclear war, and we're all looking for an escape, and so happy little trees. Yes. Happy little clouds. Bob Ross. Oh, my God. It's like watching. It's it, Bob Ross is for the mind and the eyes kind of like a PBS version of just smoking a little joint. Yes, he totally. Yeah, he's Bob Ross. Bob Ross is the one person you don't have to be high to watch. Yeah, because if you yeah, if you watch him, you uh-huh. still feel high. Yeah, you're like, holy shit! It really is a little tree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a happy little tree. He just suddenly, out of nowhere, he made a happy little tree. It wasn't there a second ago? That didn't look like a tree. Yeah. A second ago or three minutes Bob ago. Ross's, Bob Ross's relaxed nature just just oozes out of that show and it fills into you and you feel so relaxed. Like, like I can't imagine Bob Ross the person going, Oh shit, I'm late. Where's my fucking keys? Deborah! Debra, where's my keys? You know? <laughs> well, what what I find funny about Bob Ross, and I think I might have mentioned this before, is yeah. that oh. is that he's retired military. Yeah. He didn't start yeah. that show until he retired from the military, where he was a drill sergeant. Yeah. Of which he will he will only say, I did my duty. Which tells me right off, you were a drill, you were an asshole. Yeah. You were a professional asshole for 20 years. Oh, yeah. What? A th- I mean, picture any drill sergeant from any movie that you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. And Bob Ross was Arlie Ermey. Yeah. Just imagine that. And then he became Bob Ross. Yeah. Yeah. What a 180. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, picture picture Arlie Ermy suddenly coming out with a painting show. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Arlie Ermy yeah. is all all gentle. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't picture it. Yeah. Arlie Ar- Ar- yeah. Ermy. You, you know him, baby. He's the actor who basically plays the drill sergeant or a drill sergeant type in every... I thought it was Arlie Emery, but I might be mistaken. Is it? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. It's been a long time since I had to think about him. Yeah. He was the military guy in, like, every movie for the last 10 10 years. Yeah. 20 years. How do you go from that to nursing, nursing... Wounded squirrels back to health. Yeah, no. The you know? Excellent question. Yeah. That is <clears throat> weird. Bob Ross. Bob Ross. Bob Ross. He's huge now. Can you believe that? Like Bob his. Like his old. Oh, like his third eye opened like a an old window shade. Yeah. You know those kind of vinyl ones that you pulled it a little and then it went up. Yeah. If you pulled it down really far, then it would go up really fast and then spin around the top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was that was Bob Ross's third eye opening up. <laughs> yeah, freaking weird. Bob Ross is everywhere. It's bizarre. <laughs> so the main story this week on Notes from the Bookstore is about story time. Okay. I have been doing story time for this corporation... For over 13 years. And it's been wild. I tell parents. Yeah. You know, a lot of times parents tell me, like ask me after story time, wow, that was that was amazing. You really went all out. Like, like that must be exhausting. And I tell them that that the hardest part for story time is trying to train the parents. Yes. Because it's not that I don't want these kids to act out, it's that I want the parents to be okay that the kids act out, but not too okay that they just let the kid do whatever they want. Yeah. Like, don't be throwing things at me. Don't be, like, hitting me. Don't be yelling every five freaking seconds. But also, talk to me and interact with me. You can get up. You can come over here. You can talk to me. That's the best part of story time Mm -hmm. is when I'm interacting with these kids and riffing on these kids. So I have to train the parents... And also, I tell the parents that when their precious child, when their precious kid acts up, I tell them, you know, no matter what horrible thing their kids did during story time, I have had worse. Yeah. I have had worse things happen during story time. Yeah. I had one story time where all of the kids at story time dogpiled me at the end. Oh, God. They literally were chasing me, and then, like, I, I, I was running away from them throughout the entire children's department. And then finally, I jumped onto the stage, and they all just dove after me. And they, like, I had 30 kids on top of me. <laughs> so, and then there was one kid who just was so surprised to have a storyteller that was messing up and, and being silly. So, the, the little hyperactive ADD kid is just, hey, Mr. Steve, you kept messing up. And I'm like, yeah, I, I kept messing up. I, you know, I have just so many kids. It's just, uh, I, you know, I get confused. Yeah, you're really stupid, aren't you, Mr. Steve? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, sure, I guess, if that's what you got out of it. And then the kid, still smiling and just all happy and stuff, slaps me as hard as he can. Oh, God. He just straight at this little, like, six or seven-year-old kid straight up slaps me. Where were his parents? Yeah, where were his parents then? It, yeah, I don't know. Maybe at the cafe. But then, yeah, straight up slaps me. Yeah. And then some some adult tells the kid, like, not to do it, but it, it wasn't his parents. It was just some adult that was nearby and so, yeah. saw a kid slapping Mr. Steve. So then, like, oh, I'm sorry that my daughter threw my little pony at you. And I'm like, oh, it's okay. I've had worse thrown at me. Yeah. No matter what these kids do, I have had worse. I've just, I've had worse. So nowadays, this is how 
we do story time. I in the near the end of the month, near the end of October, I will get this my schedule of story times for November. And it's like, okay, here's November. Here are the story times you were doing. Here is the book you have to read mm-hmm. for every story time. Here are some activities. We may bring you some stickers, but probably not. But anyway, this is the book you have to read this Saturday. This is the book you have to read this Saturday. This is the book you have to read this Saturday. This is the book you have to read this Saturday. There you go. And so what I try and do is try and craft a story time around that. I'm really having a hard time this Saturday with this next story time because yeah. it's a book about about never giving up. And and when I first read it, it gave me the feels because it it really does seem to be a book about dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. Because the book's about Humpty Dumpty and Humpty Dumpty is like the the like a, a bird watcher and he's really successful and he likes to climb up to the top of the wall and look for birds and you know brings a lunch and binoculars and he makes a day of it and one day he fell and yeah the people at, at all the king's hospital put me back together again and now I'm better but now I'm scared and now I won't get up on a ladder yeah. and now I'm worried and now I'm frightened and sometimes I try not to leave my house but I try to be brave and I need to try again and Mm-hmm. It's a really speed story, but it it g- gave me the feels because I like it, dude. I've been in a robbery. I've been there. So it, so even before my mother in law died, I was I I thought to myself I might have a hard time emotionally reading this story at story time. Yeah. So now it's taken on this whole other meaning, and and so I'm worried about story time. But I have to read one book, and they didn't tell the and 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 that's it. Like the minimum I have to do is I have to read this story, and then have some sort of craft at the end, and that's it. So I try and make my own funny, weird things. Like how can I make this entertaining? Yeah. How can I make this fun? So back in but back in the day though. The only thing I had to do was okay. Every store has to do story time at eleven a at eleven a.m. every Saturday, and mm-hmm. that's it. Have fun, and that was it. So I was in charge of what story times I would do. Yeah. You know, I was in charge of the schedule, and I went all out. So there would be some months where it's like, okay, it's January, it, it's uh, it's March story time. So the first story time of the month is uh, pajama story time. That was one. It, you had to come in your pajamas. So I would come in these full body footsie pajamas yeah. and I would have a blanket. I have had my thumb in my mouth. I bought a nightcap. <laughs> and I would sit on the floor with the kids and we'd all have pillows and blankets. Then I, I had mustache story time where we would make mustaches at the end and all the kids had mustaches. Um, I had pirate story time and I came up with a pirate map. Like I would find a map of the actual store. Yeah. And then I would hide things throughout the store and then I would make the map look all dirty and old. And then I would come out as a pirate and the kids would be making fun of me. So then at the end I would admit that I'm actually not a pirate. I'm a pit, a P I T a pirate in training. (laughs) I'm actually not officially a pirate until I find treasure. Unfortunately, I can't find a treasure map anywhere. And there's been a treasure map hiding on stage the whole time. So I would take the kids on this, treasure hunt throughout the store yeah. and and i would it, a lot of the story times i did i would do over and over again so why so they so we would have pirate story time the kids would like it when are you gonna do pirate story time again it's like okay well maybe in three months we'll be doing it again so i would do pirate story time again i would do mustache story time again and princess story time again we would have tea parties and we would have uh, superhero story times all the time. Yeah. So I I would recycle a lot of these things. So anyway, my favorite story time. I'm in charge of the kids section of the store. It's a Monday. I'm opening, and it's 9 a.m. and there's nobody in the store. I'm in Sacramento at the time, and there's nobody in the store, and we're all bored, and I'm shelving books. And I'm, and I'm, a, oh, here's, here's a, Jesus. You okay, honey? That's okay. Okay. Scare the crap out of me. Coming in here. Jesus. <laughs> oh my God, I know how Bam Majera's 
parents feel. I'm just here telling a fun story, then all of a sudden you run in. <laughs> Thought you were going to start punching me, said fireworks off in here. <laughs> what the hell, Bam? You're acting crazy. So I'm bored, and yeah. there's nothing to do, and I'm shelving kids' books in the store. And, oh, here's some magazines. Someone must have not put these away last night. I guess I'll walk these to the front of the store. Hey, Sema, how you doing? Mm -hmm. Registers, doing good at the registers? Great. Here are some magazines. Uh, I found them in the back. And why are five school buses suddenly pulling up to the front of this store? <laughs> um, let me call the manager. Beep, boop, beep, beep, beep. Um... Yeah, Lance, hey, how you doing? It's Steve. Uh, four school buses have pulled up into the store, and yeah, they're coming in. To, they're lining up in front of our door. We don't have a field trip or anything we didn't know about, right? No, no one told me anything. Yeah, I'll be there in a moment, Steve. <laughs> and so the, the kids just start pouring into the store, <clears throat> and the manager comes to me. Oh, who's in charge here? Oh, not me. I'm just one of the... I'm just one of the uh, chaperones, yeah, you're gonna need to talk to that guy over there. Okay, yeah. well, I'll wait for him to come in. Okay, hi, my name is Lance. I'm the manager today, and uh, uh, what are you guys doing? Uh, and, and finally, everybody, they're like 50 kids have piled in, 50, 60 kids have piled into the store, and they're all being hyperactive. And the, the teacher in charge is all like, Well, we're here, uh, and calm down, Johnny, calm down, don't make me. Don't make me get you in trouble. I will send you back home. You're going to sit with the teacher. Yeah, so we're here with uh, Julie. Put that down, okay? <laughs> your guests here. Come on. We're here for our field trip. And then Lance goes, well, it, yeah, we weren't expecting a field trip. And it's like, what, what are you talking about? We, we planned a field trip and a story time. With you guys for, for, yeah, we planned it like three months ago. Man, you 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 borders people are very unprofessional. No <laughs> wonder I heard you guys are going out of business. And then Lance goes, oh, no, we're not borders. <laughs> that's, that's like two miles down. You got to actually go down Howe Avenue and then take a right. No, we're we're the other people. Yeah. And the guy, the teacher's like, oh, my goodness, we went to the wrong bookstore. They're expecting us at Borders. Oh, <laughs> man, we were going to have a, a, a story time and a field trip. All the kids are here already. We can't just, I mean, we can get back into the bus and go over there, but, you know, half of the time will be gone. Oh, man, we, we ruined it. Who? Oh, man, we totally... I'm 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 so sorry, sir. I guess we'll just we'll just leave the store. And like I'm there, like a little kid, just like tugging on Lance's shirt, mm -hmm. all, you know, the arm of his shirt. And I'm like, Lance, 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 Lance. Listen, just trust me. Have the kids sit down in the children's section and give me two minutes, <laughs> and I can set up a story time. And so it, Lance goes, okay. Uh, um, uh, sir, our storyteller is here, and he says that if you uh, send your kids into the children's department and give them two minutes, he can do a story time. And, and I, I'm there, and I'm like, hi, how you doing? My name is Mr. Steve. I do the story times here. So uh, how long do you guys have? Uh, well, we're we're here for, for the next 50 minutes. 50 minutes, great. Okay. So, yeah, I just just give me two minutes, and uh, yeah, no, I got it. I got it. Just, 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 just. We, we can do this. So the kids pile into the children's department. They're all excited, you know, waiting for a story time. And Lance moves all the fixtures away so we can get all like 60 kids in there. Yeah. And I run into the break room and I'm going through all of the stuff that's there in the break room. And right there in my locker, I just so happen to, to just keep my pirate outfit there. <laughs> And I throw it on and I come out as the pirate and I do a story time. And I've, and because I do the same, I did the same story times over and over again because I was in charge of the schedule. I already, I had it all planned and I had a treasure box and I had things to give away to the kids. And I, I had the, the map 
and I took all 60 kids throughout the store and we did a fun activity and it, it was so fun and so exciting and 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 the uh, halfway through the story time one of the kids is like we were promised snacks do you guys have snacks and the teacher's like no remember i told you we went to the wrong place and i was like well it just so happens i have snacks right here who wants some invisible ice cream <laughs> And the kids are like, I want invisible ice cream. And I'm like, here, kids, here's some invisible ice cream. And I'm pretending to toss invisible ice cream to all the kids. Eat your invisible ice cream, kids. And the kids just love it. They love the idea, and they're eating it. Mm, mine's strawberry. Mine's vanilla. Mine's chocolate. I love it. And then, like, I, 30 seconds pass, and I'm like, oh, oh, my goodness, kids. I'm sorry. I didn't get you invisible ice cream. I got you invisible bird poop. And all these kids are <laughs> spitting now on each other because they're spitting out something they didn't even eat in the first place. Yeah. And I just did that over and over again. That was a big bit for me for a while. That was, <laughs> that was, that was a huge bit. Well, it, it got, if it gets kids spitting on each other, I'm for it. <laughs> big fan of us uh, uh, getting young children to spit in public. Yeah. It, it was so, it was such a big story time that the, that the teachers all came to me. It's like, you knew we were coming, right? And I'm like, no, I didn't know you were coming. I just do story, have done story time for like eight years. And I just, I've done this story time before. This is yeah. just the story time I do every Saturday. And then like the, the principal is there. It's like, uh, thank you, Steve. That was amazing. So, so did we plan the field trip with you I, again? No, we're not borders. <laughs> I'm just, that much of a professional, I guess. Yeah. And so that became like a really good relationship with us because the teachers, they ended up uh, doing uh, book fairs with us and doing events with us. And we, we bought all the books for the school. They originally had uh, a partnership with the other guys with Borders, but they accidentally came to us and they didn't mean to come to us mm -hmm. because just some guy was spacing out and we stole them. We stole them <laughs> from the other bookstore. You stole and yeah, them. Yeah, that became like a like a big massive partnership that obviously is probably still around because the other guys went out of business. So yeah, that was my favorite story time. And I've got a picture too. I've got a picture of me and I've I've, I've got I'm, I'm you know I'm holding a, my treasure chest and yeah. you can see the treasure map in the background and there's all these kids. Yeah, my favorite my favorite. <sighs> Oh my god, they're screaming. They're screaming so hard. <laughs> Living room watching Supernatural. So yeah, I that's I just wanted to tell that story. It's my favorite story time. Nice. I made up a story time. It took me two minutes, but I made up a story time and it was, it was freaking awesome. <laughs> that's that's just a story I wanted to say. And that is it from Notes from the Bookstore this week. And remember, boys and ghouls. Huh? Maxwell? Boys and ghouls. You thought I was gonna say boys and girls, but no, I said boys and ghouls. <laughs> you too can save ten percent on all your purchases, and all you have to do is go surfing on the sun. Two things about that. Number one, go surfing on the sun was an idea to end notes from the bookstore written by twelve year old Isabella, my daughter. And also, number two, <laughs> Surfing on the Sun is my favorite Smash Mouth song. Uh-huh. I think. I'm assuming that the band Smash Mouth wrote a song called Surfing on the Sun. I have no proof of this, yeah. but I also believe I'm 100% right. Yeah, Maxwell's already singing it. 